Hello my lovely, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I want to show you my swatching of the color cards of my new core water color set from Golden as I promised in my last video <laughs> and I'll link the video up in the cards if you care to look at it. Um, the unboxing. So here I'm showing you an overview of the beautiful little tubes. They're only five milliliters but um, the colors are supposed to be very strongly pigmented and therefore a five milliliter tube will get you a long way or last you a long time. And uh, what I usually do is I print out my swatches. I used to draw them before, but now I actually draw them with a pen with my silhou silhouette and uh, make life easier for myself. Of course, the black line is done with a waterproof felt pen, so not with the silhouette. And uh, I'm filling in all the details by hand. So I'm noting down the color name, the pigment information, and the light fastness. I use little stars as customary in the Schmincke line. Of course, it's not um, completely transferable to the ASTM rating that is common in the US. However, for me it's easier to see. <laughs> I'm looking for all the info on the tube and uh, I find that I cannot see the uh, transparency, the staining and the granulation information here. So, in the end, I go to their website and look for it there. And of course, uh, Golden or Core have beautiful swatches with all the details on their website, which is a very good source for information. And. Um, one more thing to note is that I put the color number also into the uh, top right corner, which makes it easier if you want to reorder. For the titanium white, I put a uh, black watercolor over that uh, square that you just saw uh, that I crossed out. And luckily I use uh, the Frixion pen from Pilot to uh, erase all the info that I miswrote. Uh, and you will see later that I made some mistakes which I had to erase as well. So with all the info in the sheets I can now get my colors ready to paint in the swatches for which I'm planning to use the Escoda Perla in size 8 and my beloved Da Vinci Casaneo quill brush in size 0. Starting out with the Cadmium Yellow Primrose, I was originally planning to uh, put the paint into the well in the lid but since so much paint came out, I decided to use my uh, pans instead um, in order not to waste paint. Well, after cleaning the <laughs> bit of a mess <laughs> that the paint made, um, or I made, of course I'm going to use the color in the well for this swatch. And, uh, what I do usually do is paint the mass tone 
and then a gradated wash with water added and um, another thing I must say is that the air is really dry because it's winter here and we have to have the heating on obviously so the paint dries very quickly on the paper and uh, hardly gives me a chance to get on with the, the usual test that I do <laughs> which is um, swipe the fresh paint off to see if there's immediate staining and then I add some water droplets to see if uh, the paint easily creates some blooms and well I must say it didn't really it didn't really work so it's either the paint is not moving so much or it's because the air is so dry and the paper of course is very dry as well at first glance the paint looks more like it's semi opaque rather than semi transparent anyhow up next is nickel as a yellow which is quite dry in the tube as you hopefully can see uh, and um, in hindsight I may have not thinned it enough even though I do put quite a bit of water in the pan to thin it out However, that is the mass tone, I guess, and uh, it doesn't seem to want to smooth out very much. And then adding more water makes it look kind of streaky. So I'm thinking maybe I have too much paint on my brush and um, putting down a thin and out version does help a little bit <laughs> but it's still a little bit streaky so I think uh, I should have watered it down a lot from the beginning adding my water droplets and as you can see it stains quite a bit right away so it's very staining in my view as it's already um, marked down by core. Up next is the uh, Quinn Akudan Gold which is a little more moist but not too liquid as you can probably see by the blob on my brush it stays in shape <laughs> and doesn't drip so watering it down and this time I'm using quite a bit more water and getting the paint off my brush so to thin it out completely
As you can see, the paint went down much more smoothly, perhaps also because I put more water in. Who knows? <laughs> but I had a call and so I completely forgot to do my swipe test. Okay, up next is the Diarolide yellow and as you may be able to see, it's quite liquid. In order not to extend this video um, beyond what it already is, I have cut out some parts of the process, of course, cleaning out the tops of the tubes and so on is not included here. Um, so putting down the paint and seeing how it comes out of the tube is the main thing. And the diarolide yellow is going down beautifully, as you can see. And you can easily gradate the color as you go along. So now for my droplets and then the swipe test which already reveals a little bit of a residue. It's listed as not available on their website. On to the transparent pearl orange which is quite creamy in the tube, as you can see. And I'm putting in a moderate amount of water to thin it down. And it's going down quite smoothly and very bright. It's an amazing color, I find. I love orange. So, um, I'm into it. <laughs> um, it does look like the Schmincke trans transparent orange but I think it's a tad more vibrant. I'll have to compare the tests later. And here you can see it's already dried on my paper when I've just put it down. So, well, you can see for yourself. And um, yes, it's staining. But I wouldn't say it's as staining as the nickel as a yellow right off the bat. So here's the cadmium red medium, which is fairly liquid in the tube. But um, I'm still putting in quite a bit of water because it looks very pigmented and this also shows here. It goes down quite smoothly and you can gradate it quite well and it flows nicely. definitely semi-opaque. And I'm not sure if it's 
as staining as they say it is. <laughs> um, we'll see. On to the permanent scarlet, which is quite liquidy and it goes down nicely. I have thinned it down a little bit, of course, and I must say it's very well pigmented again. Going down smoothly. And immediately you can see a bloom happening there with the water. It doesn't seem to be as staining as they say. So next is the permanent alizarin crimson and it's giving me a hard time. It doesn't want to come out of the tube so I'm having to squeeze quite hard. And um, yeah, so having to pick up the little ends with my brush. taking quite a bit of time to mix the water in and getting the paint off my brush, the pure pigment. But then it goes down very nicely as expected and it's very highly pigmented I must say. lovely and bright. In go the water droplets and as you can see it's staining, yes definitely. And I can see the water blooming and flowing. Next up is the Quinacridone Magenta and that's also not so easy to come out of the tube. And I'm mixing quite a bit of water in there so in the end I get a very nice mixture of this bright beautiful color and you can see that the paint is flowing quite nicely and I can get a very nice gradated wash. And there is instant blooming as I put down the water and I would say at first glance this paint is semi-staining but we will see when I do the lifting test after the paint is thoroughly dried. Now for the dioxazine purple and it's fairly liquid in the tube but also very highly pigmented so I'm diluting it quite a bit but I would say it's a normal dioxazine purple as they come. I have several and I think they are quite the same from my first impression. I couldn't see that this one was much different. Of 
Of course it is a staining pigment and there's quite a lot of dispersion of the water droplets. And now for ultramarine and um, this is officially stated as a granulating color. And we'll see how it does on this dry paper in this dry air. I don't think it's going to granulate much. So far it seems like any other ultramarine. It's very vibrant though. And I think it's already drying. So annoying, but I got the paints in winter, so now I want to do the swatches, of course. And as you can see, it's not staining at all, at least while it's wet. And here you can see quite clearly, it's dry already in the center. And here we have the Cerulean Blue Chromium which has a nice consistency coming out of the tube and is easily mixed with the water. And you can already see that it's fairly translucent going onto the paper. But in the end, I must agree that it's probably semi-opaque. Um, and non-staining. Although on their website it says not available. Or I'm coming to think that it may be not applicable in the cases of these colors. Up next we have another blue and it's phalo blue green shade which is fairly liquid in the tube and easy to pour. And also easy to do a wash with even though the paper is so dry and I'm not doing such a great job here, I think. So even when I pick up water, it doesn't really dilute the paint so much. Perhaps it's also because it's very pigmented. That may be true. And up above you can see it's drying already. So quickly, quickly, let me get the water droplets in. And let's see if it is staining. And I think it is, yes. Their assessment is absolutely correct. Of course. The next color is cobalt teal and it's coming out of the tube quickly <laughs> so I'm ready to catch it and um, there's more pushing out so quickly put the lid back on <laughs> and 
then drop the water in. It mixes fairly quickly and well because it's a moist consistency already. And off we go. Now this color is also a granulating color, apparently, but it doesn't have much of a chance to granulate here because I didn't use enough water. I'm just doing the swatch and so we'll see later when I use it if it granulates. And um, well, it goes down beautifully as you can see. And in go my droplets. And you can see right away that the paint is moving. And it's classed as semi-staining at the moment. Lifting the fresh paint, it doesn't look like it stains much. On to Viridian Green. And I was quite curious about this color. It comes out quite liquidy or fairly moist out of the tube and mixes quite well. And I'm having a hard time trying to get a smooth wash or, you know, a good gradient. Um, it goes down very streaky and I'm not sure if it's the binder that's inside or my dry <laughs> conditions and um, it's supposed to be granulating as well and as you can see it's not granulating at the moment you'd have to give it time in a puddle I guess and it does seem to be semi-staining and now for the sap green which is fairly dry in the tube And this should have been a warning <laughs> to put more water in. Because as you can see, it looks almost black the amount of pigment that's in there so I'm trying to add a little bit of water as I go along but it's still really dark but I'm loving the color though it's a three pigment color okay but it's really nice I find to me that's a typical sap green <laughs> and um, Sennelier have a similar one I think but it's not as highly pigmented I think and here it looks like it's almost granulating And of course the yellow pigment stains the paper right away so no surprise there and here is where I'm realizing that I put the paint in the wrong swatch <laughs> um, I should have put it in the left one where it says sub green of course and um, luckily I wrote the names out with my friction pen and I can erase everything no problem and write it again. Up next is green gold and um, 
it's fairly dry in the tube so I have to coax it out um, but it's all the better more pigment I would say It mixes well and goes down really nicely on the paper. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to dry on the paper, so now I'm thinking it may be the sizing or something wrong with the sizing that the liquid or the water is soaked up right away by the paper. Could be that. Of course, this leaves the gradation with a patchy look. Um, and you can see the water is dispersing a little. And of course, green gold is also quite staining. It's classed as semi-staining by Golden. So now on to the earth pigments, starting with raw sienna natural. It's yellow iron oxide, usually used for yellow ochre, and um, it really wants to come out of the tube. <laughs> and. Um, Mixing it with water, it mixes really well. And goes down nicely on the paper. I must say the streakiness is really down to the paper, I think. You can see the patch forming already. As you will see later, I usually add my second and third layer of the paint in that place so in the end you won't see it that much now you can see the water dispersing quite nicely and of course it's non-staining as expected Up next is Burnt Sienna Natural. And the consistency, as you can see, is quite creamy. Of course it mixes well as well. And goes down very nicely. Not sure what's going on, but I may have the wrong brush to do the swatches. However, it turns out okay, I would say. Now for my water droplets. And apparently it's uh, semi-staining. I'll see later how that works out. The next color is raw umber natural. And it's also quite creamy. As well as easily diluted with water. And it also goes down very well on the paper. In go the droplets. 
and again it's classed as semi-staining. Next I'm swatching the titanium white onto the black watercolour paper that I glued in and um, it's not in order but it's on the sheet next so uh, the consistency is quite creamy or very creamy and it's going down on the paper very nicely but uh, again I have the feeling I don't have enough paint in my brush so now that I have picked up the water I go back into the paint to pick up some more pigment sorry about the messy swatch And uh, the paint is classed as semi-transparent. At least while it's wet, it does look like it's semi-opaque. But I will wait until it's dry and then take another look. <laughs> and of course it's non-staining. The next color is Van Dyke Brown which is creamy out of the tube and mixes with the water very well. And it goes down pretty smoothly on the paper as well. Now for my water droplets and I forgot the swipe test because I was distracted again. Now the paint's grey, doesn't want to come out of the tube at first, but um, I guess it means it's a lot more pigmented. And now I'm mixing the water in and it does mix very well. And as you can see, it's almost black, so very pigmented. So I'm adding a little bit more water to the paint. As a side note, after all these years of speaking English and reading US and English English, I realized that grey is spelled with an A in the US while writing out these swatches. You live and learn, don't you? <laughs> and as you would expect, the paint spray is staining. And now for my last swatch, it's the neutral tint. Which I thought was a little bit obsolete in this, um, but I think it's good to have as a mixture. It goes down quite smoothly and it's not as dark as I was expecting. 
I usually use my palette dirt <laughs> to make a grey but of course if you want to be consistent it's good to have a ready mixed grey and um, yes it seems quite staining even though it's a light colour Just a quick look at the core color chart shows me that only four of the 24 colors I received are multi-pigmented. All the others contain only one pigment. And here I'm showing you the ring that I want to fit my swatches on to. I have gone over all of them to put a second and third line of the paint onto them, then cut them out, punched a hole and also uh, did the lifting test as you can see. So I'm going through the colors individually and um, check if they are correct in my view, in the information that was given on the website. And um, if you wish, you can stop the video. And um, for instance, here I'm comparing the opacity. Uh, one seems very opaque and the other was completely uh, transparent, apparently. And um, of course you can also go to their website and check their swatches there. Even though my test is a little bit different, I would say. The blue tones are very vibrant, I find. Especially the ultramarine blue. Actually, I find all the colors are quite vibrant. Even the Viridian is quite strong. It's usually a little more on the weak side. And the Sap Green is overwhelmingly vibrant, I would say. And very highly pigmented. If you want to take a closer look, you can stop the video, as I said, but um, I'm going to keep this as short as possible because this video is very long already. <laughs> um, please, uh, if you don't mind, uh, click like below. If you didn't like the video, then do click dislike. <laughs> You're welcome to do that, of course. But I don't expect a lot of views on this very long video anyway. So, Nevertheless, I wanted to complete this. And here, um, the titanium white uh, does seem semi transparent as they say. Now I can easily flip through my swatches and find the colors I need. The tubes will stay in this beautiful tin for the moment but I have the pans in this new tin I bought and also made little swatches there to show exactly what's in the pans. And this is how I like to use my watercolors. Of course I have all my other colors sorted by colors in uh, different tins, but uh, I will keep the core ones separate for the moment. Now let me paint something. <laughs> 
And uh, what I've chosen was a bunch of tulips that I received from uh, my lovely colleagues last year. I sketched out with a water-soluble pencil that I was given by my colleague also last year for Christmas. And um, I will speed up this video, of course, so you don't have to go through the whole process of watching me paint in real time. So let me know if you have used the core watercolors before, what you think of them, or what watercolors you usually use, and um, yeah, what you make of the paints, and uh, if they really are as outstanding as they are supposed to be in your view. And uh, for me, I think the blooming on the green was a bit much, but um, this may not be the proper way to paint with these paints. And um, this is just a quick sketch. Let me know what you think. Now, as I've said before, please give me a like <laughs> on the video or a dislike if you didn't like it. And um, until my next post, which will probably be an unboxing of the Alexandra Renke Creative Box. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Do what you love. Bye for now. Ta-da!